Baseball, hot dogs, mom's apple pie, and channel cats? Yep, found in more American waters than not. In many ways, channel catfish are the people's fish. In fact, surveys reveal catfish are American anglers' third favorite species. From creeks to ponds, to rivers, lakes, and reservoirs, no matter where you are, chances are you're not too far from willing whiskers. And while channel cats may never win any beauty pageants, their whiskered and shovel-headed appearance belies some awesome sport fish and table fare potential. So if drag screaming runs and rod bending is what you're after, look no further. Another cool thing is fishing channel cats doesn't require fancy gear. At its most basic, a hook, line, and sinker, and bait is no huge expense either. From homemade stink baits to cut up sucker or smelt, or oddball baits like bubblegum or spam, there's nothing too vile for these critters, and typically, the stinkier the better. Really, catfishing can be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. Whether it's planting a rod in a forked piece of driftwood, or running and gunning with today's high-tech electronics, there's really no way to go wrong with cats. And when it comes to eating, small channels are hard to beat. Soak them in a little milk, dress them in a cornmeal jacket, and take them for a walk in hot grease. Now who doesn't love that? Big fighters and good fryers. We call that a win-win. On today's Edge, Al James and Nick Linder reveal awesome channel catfish opportunities as these guys spring into catfishing. And you wanna know something? It's a good bet that right where you're sitting now, there's some good catfishing within a short driving distance of where you're at, especially if you've got rivers in your area. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There's one. Got him already? Whoa, whoa. 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 You don't waste no time. No. That's what I mean. It's amazing. You know, people think catfish, they think they're really sort of a... Yeah, how about a dog? Oh, I yeah, missed mine. Yeah. I missed them. They think that I they're really mine. sort of bottom dwellers, well, but, but cats are really... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, look at the size of that sucker. Yeah. Nick, are you going to net him? Or are you going to grab him? What are you guys doing? I wonder if no, you No, no, no. You're going to need a net on look these guys that. here. Wow. I know. That took a grand total of three minutes. I was going to throw in there, and he came right in the back, and he threw in there, and then I missed a big my bait. He's got my bait. Well, come here, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to need a net for this guy here. This guy here is a little bit too much. Boy, this current is just ripping in here. That's one thing that's sort of cool about the Nick. early season cats like this. These fish really go to certain areas, and barriers are it, are at you know dams are obviously one type of barrier, but there's a lot of different barriers that exist in a river. You know where these fish will really uh, concentrate. Just get them in here. There we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, there's a good one. Look at that net. That's a wimp net for for cats. It gives me this wimpy bad. Bass no, I net. didn't. I thought it was actually. It is. It's a good one. Look yeah, at I'd him. say that's a good one. That's a, that's a pretty serious cat. Look at that beautiful fish. This is a what? This is a big male. Okay. Okay, this buddy boy, they really pound it too. The one thing in these fast current like this, what's really amazing on how fast the fish hit the bait, you know, most of the time catfish, you know, you're fishing and, you know, they come up and peck it in this really fast current. When these fish are up in here like this, these fish are up in here to do one thing and that's eat. Oh, there you go, there, there you, you go, go, man. Beautiful All fish. Years. Come here, buddy. The interesting thing is, is in this particular condition, uh, there's a lot of fish in here, you know, in a, in a really small area. Get her back, get her back in the water. Boy, these, whoops, sorry about that. Oh. 
You know, believe it or not, the water temperature is 48 degrees. Actually, really cold water. We almost had a double. I missed mine. I haven't been catting all year. And he's been cheating. He's been out here a little bit. Yeah, you know, one thing about catfish like that, that's a nice channel cat. In the southern states and in many of the mid, mid US states, catfishing is a big deal. People have been chasing channel cats for years, along with blues and flatheads. It's a, a way of life for a lot of guys. They love catching, catching cats. Recently, we're seeing a, um, an interest in catfishing in the northern states. It's really been, been fun. Now these fish always have been up here, particularly in a lot of our major river systems. And people have been fishing cats a lot. But you're seeing more magazine articles on them, more newspaper art articles on catfish, more television shows, local producers, regional producers, national producers, like, like those of us on the edge that are telling a catfish story all over the country. This creates interest. That's what drives the bass fishing world. Stop and think about it. There's a gazillion bass shows. There's all kinds of ba bass websites, all kinds of magazines servicing the bass industry. That's why there's an excitement. You're starting to see this in the catfishing world. And the more people that talk about the fun of catfishing, the more people get interested in it. And this is all good for all of us. Right now we've been fishing with these, uh, this is a VMC tournament circle hook. The nice thing about a, a circle hook a design is the fact that in a lot of cases, as we'll fish later in wood and stuff, where you got a lot of stuff on the bo bottom, that hook does not get hung up as much just because of the design characteristics of the hook. So they work really nice. I really like that tournament circle. Okay, we're ready for a, another cat. Do you need some bait? Yep, I do. I have a feeling I'm gonna be cutting a lot of bait today. Due to lack of seniority, I am in charge of cut-in probably net in. If you're the young guy in a group and somebody invites you to go channel catfishing, you should probably say no because you're just going to be the guy cutting the bait the whole time. <laughs> Nick, I noticed that you're, you you got to keep that deck cleaner up there. Clean. I know. I like that deck up with a <laughs> knife. Say, we put that, it's not in the sheath. <laughs> I like that rag in the appropriate position. I, based on based on how quick the action was to start out here, I have a feeling I'm going to be doing more cutting than fishing. So hopefully I'm wrong, but we'll see. The thing I like about it when this type of fishing and we're fishing, we're holding the boat right now. It's like in about 20 foot of water. And we're dropping the bait sort of straight down and we're using a really heavy sinker. It was really interesting because we were out here, Nick and I were over here last weekend and the water, believe it or not, was two feet lower. The water came up that dramatically and we were positioned way out in the center there where that really fast water, there was a big deep current seam out there in 35 foot of water. Now it seems like these fish have either positioned, either blown out of that hole, which they could have. But one thing that's really the most critical is the current speed. There's no question about it. You gotta get on the right current speed where it's sort of an interesting thing. They don't like the washing machine effect. They like the current to be relatively, even though it's fast, but stable fast, if you understand what I mean. And if you, a lot of times one of the best spots are where you have a deep slick water or a eddy and then fast, deep current going past that area is the really critical types of spots you're looking for at this time of the year. Wow, yeah, you got them. I got them. Yeah, you know, they're swimming up river. Yeah, you gotta I, get I, on them, yeah. Got him. I got them, James. I, you were sleeping on them. I was one. not, it's <laughs> a big one. working right now look outside is this spreadsheet weather no it's not this is fishing weather so stop clicking get out there and catch a bass stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala ripstop Auto stow and deploy, power trim, and your choice of iPilot or iPilot Link. <laughs> Altera from Minn Kota. We can't believe it either. For 70 years, you've known us for our high performance rods. Now, it's time to meet our machinery. 
32 pairs of hands. Touch, craft, and test each St. Croix rod. Overkill, not with our reputation on the line. St. Croix, the best rods on earth. Say goodbye to winter and hello to spring for your outdoor needs at Mills Fleet Farm, where you'll save with low fleet prices. Prepare for outdoor entertaining. There's a new selection of barbecue grills and new styles of patio furniture that offer comfort and durability. Shop now for wheelbarrows, rakes, and lawn tractors. Plus, be ready to tackle outdoor projects with a new log splitter, chainsaw, or power tool. For everything outdoors, it's Mills Fleet Farm. We are outdoors. This segment is brought to you by Northwest Ontario. There's no place like this. You know, as far as location goes, uh, we said a couple different times, or I mentioned these catch, catch, particularly channel cats, do really good in rivers. River systems all over the country got a lot, a lot of cats in them. And uh, detail water areas like we're in now, no matter what time of the year, 12 months out of the year, there are some cats sitting in these tailwater areas. It's probably the most consistent bite you can get all year long. You know, in summer, some of these fish will fall down, go into the log jams and some of the other holes, but there is always, always, always some fish, channel cats in particular, up in tailwater areas like this. So it's one of those consistent spots, and a lot of people, could, you get in areas like this, you could bank fish a lot. And, and that's the beauty of the tailwater water bite. There's Ooh, always there places got to him, drive Nick. down and a lot okay. of people get an opportunity that don't got have boats to take advantage of. On the Santee rig? On the Santee rig. rig. Yep. I was a little suspect of the Santee rig. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> Do I got to net this fish or will you? I got him. I'm in a good spot. You got to net it. This one's beaten up, Nick. Ooh. Ah. What size? Looks good. I think well, yeah, no, I know. There's some of these boys really pull in this fast current. I know. They're just smoker. I know. I will say one thing. I'm glad I have the power turning. To me. Come here, buddy. Another nice male. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh. Come here. Oh, there you go. There you go. Look at this guy. Nick, I'm such a nice guy. There you go. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect indeed. Mm -hmm. I really, really love channel cats. And I love them so much that I went to Grand Forks <laughs> for, for college. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. They're toughies too in the current. You know, the rigging that we use up north are pretty, pretty simple. Uh, sometimes if the water's real cold, you can use night crawlers, but you get bothered a lot by a lot of other fish. Generally, cut bait, bait usually a sucker or moon eye, works the best for us up here. And in fall, uh, uh, when the uh, a migration starts with frogs, you can get a great bite on big cats frogging. And uh, rod reel line is real simple. This is a St. Croix uh, 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 Mojo catfish rod. And it worked really great for what we're, do what we're doing here. This is a Daiwa reel, size 300. That 300 reel in, in size is really kind of, kind of important. We're fishing heavy line. I got 25 pound mono on here. Both Jimmy and, and, and Nick are fish, fishing braid on there. You want a reel that can hold a lot of line. And uh, because we use these for, for sometimes you can be using them for, for blues if we're down south. Uh, we'll use some, some sometimes going for flatheads. Yeah, you know, so I, and I don't think it really makes too much difference if you're fishing uh, a, a braid or heavy monitor, that's your choice. But it's real, that's real simple. It's that simple.
At Mercury, we put everything we have into our engines, and we take every ounce we can out of them. So when we set out to build a completely new engine, we looked at every nut, bolt, screw, shaft, gear, and cowling, and then we started innovating. New engineering, top secret alloys, and ended up creating the lightest line of engines in their class, so you can get way, way more out of way, way less. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Four Strokes. Lighter, quicker, more efficient. Mercury, go boldly. There's no place like this. Yes! Paid to put fish in the boat, you don't mess around with the thing that puts fish in the boat. Always use the best line. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You know, to me, in river fishing situations, the current seams are so critical in how the fish position. You can be 25 feet off and not catch any and then get right on the right current seam and you catch fish just successively. So what's really critical here is where you're positioning the boat. It's, it's amazing, you know what I mean? If you're over there or over 20 feet, 30 feet over there, you won't catch that many fish. The fish are right on that, the line of the fastest current and then the slick water wall and they're sitting right on that exact line and that's where we want our baits to be sitting on the bottom. You can see where we're sitting and you can see this is where the fast current seam is where it's really rolling in that sort of slick water so i want that bait pinned on the bottom right in that seam area here we may still have to change positions here but it's interesting you get on the right line and you just sit there and the fish keep on coming to you they keep on coming up the train what we're going to do is do a slight move here aha no wonder i'm not getting bit no bait. But the thing, nice thing is you'll notice that we're not anchoring and a lot of cat fishermen generally anchor. And I've been using this uh, Minn Kota Ultrex. It is unquestionably, bar none, the best tool for river fishing I've ever seen. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We can just slightly reposition. I'm gonna just move up here and you'll see this is really relatively fast current in here. It's probably what, probably five, in excess of five, six miles an hour and I hit the spot lock feature on the all trucks and we're pinned in this position. And we will absolutely, you can see how fast this current is and the boat is absolutely pinned, fixed in this position, no matter where you're at. It's just, it's just, just that one feature alone for a trolling motor, I told them when they came up with that feature, they're gonna sell it to every angler that's out there because as soon as you use it, you become automatically you use it so much throughout the course of the season for every different species of fish I fish for, crappies, bass. We use a variety of different rigs in this fishing scenario. I've done good on spinner rigs, uh, spinning glows will also work like on a three-way rig. Nick's got a Santee Cooper rig, which is just a three-way rig, a float, and then the bait and back of it. But one thing that's really probably one of the most vitally important, believe it or not, is the weight of your sinker. I was in here yesterday with a buddy of mine and it was really intriguing because we said we just couldn't hold on the bottom and we weren't catching any fish. And then what he did is he put a five ounce sinker on. As soon as he put that heavier sinker on and it pinned the bait tighter to the bottom, it seemed like in this fast current, the fish are really pinned tight to the bottom. We both started catching fish. He caught the first three and I said, I had enough. I turned around, I put a, a five ounce on and started catching fish. So it goes to show you, how something as simple in presentation, you talk just a sinker, could make that much of a difference, but it can.
Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to LundBoats.com. Let us make this absolutely clear. The days of wasted casts and missed opportunities are over. New Mega Imaging takes fishing into the megahertz range for the first time. Because higher frequency sonar means higher frequency of this. Without a doubt, it's the most detailed picture of the world below ever. And it's only from Humminbird. Can't get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. Yeah, Linder we'll here for Angling Buzz. I'm Tony Roach. Brian Rolstone. Lee Talkett here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water has been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bath like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie Region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up to date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. I could see already what you're talking about. Oh, the clarity of it, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know, for early season catfishing, we were talking about different types of barriers. The dam is definitely one type of really distinct barrier, but this is another one. And what this is, is a big shallow flat in the river. And then this is the first time it dumps into a hole here. And what we're using is two different, uh, or actually three different types of sonar to identify a couple of different things. One under, to identify fish as well as to identify the cover and how the fish would position around the cover. But I have 2D sonar, down imaging, and side imaging. This uh, side imaging on my Helix 10 is mega imaging. And what's really incredible about this is really the accuracy of this, the imaging itself. You'll see what I mean as I drive past this bridge abutment, the understanding where you can see isolated boulders in back of this Right in here, you can see those are actually probably catfish and various uh, carp suckers that are sitting in that really fast, you know, a little bit of a current break. But look how the crispness of the image, you can see exactly what the bottom composition is. It's just amazing. Look at it here, it's a bridge abutment coming in. Look at the clarity of it. And you can see all this nice structure. A lot of times when you get in this type of stuff in fast current, the fish are actually down inside the, right down tight to the bottom. Oh, yeah, sweet. Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> this is a good fish. It's like that first one you had, I'm guessing. They're so much fun. I just love it. I just love it. Oh, he's rolling up on top. Coming up, making some noise. Coming up and making some noise. How you doing there, Nick? Are you my man? Look at that. Let, let me get him up here a minute. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ooh, yeah, yeah, look at that baby, huh? Whoa! Ah, no. Now, come on, Nichols! Look at that! Oh, thank you, thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you, thank you. Now, scary. just hold him there. there you go. Come here, baby. Okay. Come here, let me get a little, little lip lock on you. Oh. How's that one, huh? Wow. Nice one? Mm -hmm. They are so tough. Hey, I got a challenge for you. Most of you that are watching this show right now have never on purpose won catfishing. Come on, admit it, you haven't. And you want to know something? It's a good bet that right where you're sitting now, there's some good catfishing within a short driving distance of where you're at, especially if you've got rivers in your area. 
You know, my wife and I support a lot of different ministries that touch our hearts for a period of time. Uh, one of my favorites is, is Charles Stanley, who publishes a publication called In Touch Magazine. And his last issue were, were, was really kind of fun to look through. Some of the things on the cover, God likes to party, that'll get your attention. Uh, 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 could Jesus take a joke? That was an interesting subject matter. This is your brain on play and a, a whole lot of other things. But when I got into it, the whole issue was fascinating to me. But let me read one key part that I think all of us have to hear and pay attention to. It says here, the reason our bodies and brains flourish when exposed to play, we were made for it. Let me go a little bit further here. Play creates more neural networks in the brain and throughout the body, making the entire body a tool for learning. And I hope I pronounced this right. Jake Panskemp, a researcher at Washington State University, asserts that play activates the whole neocortex, the top layer of the cerebral hemisphere, which higher order brain functions are carried out in. Just one half hour of fun significantly changes about 400 genes in that magnificent, mysterious organ. But as interesting as these discoveries are, scientists are only creating complex terminology for something the Bible makes plain. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's in Psalms 139.14. What that means is that we were not created for drudgery and adversity alone. Rather, our Heavenly Father richly supplies us with all things to enjoy, 1 Timothy 6, 17. Christ came so we can have life abundantly. And play is one of the things that make the abundant life possible. In fact, according to Thomas Hendricks, a sociology professor at Elon University, I think that's right, play is a dynamic, ever-changing process that is filled with ambiguity and surprise. We convince ourselves that play is frivolous, profligate, I think that word is right, I gotta look it up, perhaps even sinful, but that couldn't be further from the truth. There's a reason why our bodies and brains, both crafted by the hand of a loving God, flourish when exposed to play. We were made for it. God's word all talks about balance and play is part of balance. You can't work all the time, you need to play, you have to have time to be alone, time with the Lord. Balance is the key to a successful life and God's word talks about balance in all areas of life. Even playing, you gotta have fun. God is a joyful God and he shares these experiences with us so we can live a full, joyful life. I had to share that with you. I was really blessed by this issue. Hey, from all of us here at the edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. Hey, have some fun today. Maybe go fishing. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.